grade 2 of Vlogsember. So between all the comment sections and the little question bubble that I put up on my Instagram, I do have quite a few questions for you guys regarding this pregnancy. Um, also, I am so out of breath already this pregnancy. So if I'm huffing and puffing, please excuse that. But I quickly will tell you guys the story of how I told Harris. Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. Welcome to day two of Vlogsember. If this is your first time here, welcome. Today's video is going to be a pretty chill one for vlog cyber. It's actually going to be a pregnancy Q&A. Over the last few weeks, I've posted a few different pregnancy-related videos, like my announcement video, my first trimester and two-week wait video, and I did go ahead and ask you guys over on Instagram to leave some questions. So between all the comment sections and the little question bubbles that I put up on my Instagram, I do have quite a few questions from you guys regarding this pregnancy. So that is what today's video is going to be. I tried to have it be a little bit festive and I'm sitting in front of my Christmas tree. I do wish it was a little dim outside so I could turn the lights on. I feel like turning them on now, they really wouldn't look like much. So we're gonna leave the tree off for now, but I'm sitting in front of my mantle, in front of my Christmas tree. I'm trying to make today's video a little bit festive for you guys for Vlogsember. But I don't want today's video to be too, too long. I feel like for Vlogsember this year, I kind of want to keep the video short and sweet for you guys. Let me know what you think down below if you want shorter videos or you do enjoy my long form content. But without further ado, let's jump right into my pregnancy Q&A. So I have quite a few different screenshots of questions over here on my computer. So if you see me looking down, that is what I'm looking at. And we're going to start with the first question. What has been the hardest symptom for you this pregnancy? Aside from the nausea that I experienced in the beginning of my first trimester, which thankfully it was short-lived, I only experienced nausea for weeks Six or seven is when it slowly started, and then seven through nine was when it was at its worst. By the time I hit week nine, I just woke up one day and realized, wow, I wasn't really nauseous anymore, and food sounded way more appetizing to me. So thankfully, it was short-lived. But aside from that, the symptom that has gone on the longest and is the hardest one for me is my skin you probably can't even tell i have a fresh pimple on my chin over here and it actually is concentrating like on my chin mainly on this one side which i think means it is hormonal like the chin area i actually have a pimple patch over a pimple i put makeup on over the pimple patch to try and hide all my breakouts i have about three or four really red ones and then the ones that are subsiding they're actually leaving like hyperpigmentation and red spots on my face so it looks like i have crazy breakouts on my chin which i do but it actually is making it look way worse than it is that has to be the hardest symptom so far just because with the boys i feel like i got a beautiful pregnancy glow and this time around my skin just looking the way it is is making me feel not so great about myself so that has to be like the longest running symptom. Other than that, I don't really have too many. I am in my second trimester. I'm in the beginning of it. I'm almost 15 weeks. Um, so I would have to say, aside from the nausea in the beginning, my breakouts have been the hardest symptom so far. Someone commented asking, saying that they are starting their trying to conceive journey and they were wondering what... I did to track my cycle. I did post in my announcement video. I showed you guys like a snippet of my journal with you guys. So I'll quickly run through what I did to track my cycle. I feel like it's very baseline. A lot of people definitely go more in depth and track a lot more things. Um, also, I am so out of breath already this pregnancy. So if I'm huffing and puffing, <laughs> please excuse that. But I, I went really, really baseline. Back in like April, I did get the natural cycles thermometer and started to track my period using my basal body temperature, which I think they say is one of like the most conclusive ways and accurate ways to track your cycle without using hormonal birth control. However, with me, I just, it was so hard to stay on track with doing that. Same thing when I used to take birth control, like I have so much going on with the boys and everything that many days excuse me many days i would forget and then the time would get away from me so for that i did, i was not very consistent with tracking my basal body temperature but the one thing that i was consistent with was taking lh strips for me i feel like i'm very in tune with my body i did get off of birth control back in november when i had that ovarian cyst rupture 
I knew that we were going to start trying at some point in this year and I wanted to get a good idea of what my cycle looked like so I stopped taking birth control then and although my cycles were on the longer side my cycles ranged from 30 to 35 days sometimes they were consistent in that and once I did start taking LH strips I found that my ovulation window was pretty consistent i usually ovulated around cycle day 16 through 18 or i'd get my peak around 16 through 18 and then you usually ovulate 24 hours after that so lh strips was the number one thing that i did for me i knew my lh did not start rising until like cycle day 13 because i did ovulate on the later end of the spectrum because i had a longer cycle so i wouldn't start testing until cycle day 12 or 13 and then i would test around 10 p.m not 10 p.m 10 a.m every morning they say like your lh naturally rises around that time so that's just the time that i stuck to i would take the boys to school come home and take my lh strip and then i would test over the next few days once i got my super dark peak and for me i just i was just very in tune with it i knew what the tests were going to start looking like when my lh started to spike and then usually the day before i got peak i would be like okay tomorrow's definitely going to be my peak because i would get a test where the control line was darker than the test line and that for me was my peak day and then i would test like one or two days after that and you want to make sure your lh is going back down and that confirms peak now you can have peak in lh and not actually release an egg for me it just so happened that i had my annual exam on september 13th and my ob wanted to do an internal ultrasound to check up on the cysts that i was having because it was a concern for me i didn't know if i was releasing eggs or not because of all the cysts that i experienced and so i just so happened to have an internal ultrasound and was able to see follicles forming on my left ovary now if you do experience infertility they will check things like that, like your follicle size, and they'll be able to determine if you're going to release an egg. But the average person tracking or trying, you don't really get that. It just so happened for me, like timing. And so that was on the 13th. We saw large follicles on my left ovary. And then, like I said, I'm, I'm so in tune with my body that on the 17th, I think I got peak. I'm pretty sure or it was like the 16th on the 17th i felt ovulation and then on the 18th we conceived so it definitely is trial and error i definitely think lh strips are pretty user friendly once you get the hang of them that is the main thing that i did to track my cycle and i highly recommend if you're starting out and you want to get an idea of your cycle definitely use lh strips okay moving on next question someone is what is the gender of your baby do you know the gender of your baby and harris and i do know the gender of baby i actually took the sneak peek gender predictor test that can determine or predict gender um as early as six weeks i took that around nine weeks um and at that point at 10 weeks i got my blood drawn for my nipt test so i got my results of the sneak peek test which i did vlog all of this you guys will get this video on my birthday december 18th but i did get my results for the sneak peek test on the 19th of, of november i'm pretty sure and then that was a sunday the following friday after thanksgiving i got my nipt test result and it confirmed it said like the same thing um it confirmed the gender so i've known since around thanksgiving what the gender of baby is harris knows the boys know harris's family my family people like in my real life i'm not the type of person to like keep this information from you i keep it from you guys for like the fun and the suspense of it all but like people in my life know the gender of the baby um but i'm not going to share with you guys like i said until my birthday so i do know the gender you guys have to hold out i think it's like five more days by the time this video goes up to find out the gender of baby i love seeing your guys's predictions a lot of you guys think girl because my skin has been so bad and i did do a video i did in a vlog like the gender old wives tales um and that turned out leaning towards girl i will link that video up here for you guys if you missed it i just think it's super entertaining to see these things and hear these things so five more days and you guys will find out the gender of baby next question did you plan this pregnancy to happen or was it unexpected and this baby was actually planned <laughs> if you guys are familiar with the backstory of the boys i got pregnant with them my senior year in college that was definitely an unexpected pregnancy with a double layer of it being twins that was so unexpected that was not in the cards i never thought in the cards for my life 
this pregnancy if you guys have watched my videos starting back in january of this year i did like a new year's q a or something like that um i mentioned how i felt ready to start trying for a baby However, Harris was a little apprehensive still. I think he just kind of is traumatized from the whole experience with the boys. Um, so he was still apprehensive. And then I did another Q&A telling you guys that he kind of was more open to the idea of trying for a baby once summer started. And so he did start trying, I think, in May or June and then conceived in September. Yes. So this baby was planned on both of our parts. We spoke about this. I tracked everything as you guys saw. Um, so yes, this baby was not unexpected. It, I mean, it kind of was in the sense that like every month that went by, it was always a gamble, obviously, whether I was going to get pregnant or not. And somebody did ask me, let me see if I can find it. Um, what was your boyfriend? Uh, was your boyfriend Harris happy or shocked when you told him you were pregnant? I didn't film any of this. A lot of you guys asked if I filmed the boy's reaction to me telling them that I was pregnant. I didn't film anyone's reaction, but I quickly will tell you guys the story of how I told Harris. Um, but with that being said, um, this baby was planned, but it also was a surprise. We were trying for four months at that point, and that by no means is a long time to be trying for a baby. Gosh, people try years and years and years, and of course need interventions and IUI and IVF and all of those kinds of things. We're extremely lucky that that wasn't the case for us, but it did take a few months and sometimes things just don't line up great, especially when you're tracking your cycle and you know everything. Sometimes you're just not in the mood. So it is hard to make a baby. I feel like people who accidentally get pregnant think it's so easy to get pregnant. Even me with the boys, like I didn't know what it was going to take for my body to get pregnant because they were a complete shock and surprise so even going into this i didn't know what to expect it's actually a lot harder to get pregnant than you think there were months that i thought we t timed everything down to a t and then cycle day 30 would roll around and i would get my period so it was a little bit of a shock and surprise. I think in any case, whether a baby is planned or not, it is a shock or surprise because you're now picturing your life that is going to be changing in the next nine months and you do start to kind of spiral. Even though I really wanted this baby, it is a little daunting and scary to think about having three kids and how I'm going to juggle that. But moving on to the story of how I told Harris. So I found out on the 28th of September and Casey and I had plans that night. And so I just kept it to myself for that night. I did tell Casey, I did tell uh, my friend Catherine, who she is also pregnant at the same time. We're exactly seven days apart. And I think that, I think having Harris's friend Jordan and our friend Jordan and Catherine, the couple, I think having them speak about trying, it's going to be their third as well. We were pregnant with our first my boys and her boy at the same time. I think all doing this together definitely eased some of it for Harris because he knows he has someone on his side who's going to be going through the same things that we're going through and he'll be able to have that dad experience with his friend. But I did tell Catherine and Casey that night, I wanted to wait until the next day because I wanted to get out of the house and enjoy my night with Casey. I didn't really want to open up that can of worms and have that conversation because like I said, no matter what it is a shock and for Harris who was getting more open to the idea of having a baby, having our third baby. I still think he was super apprehensive of it. So I didn't tell him until the following day and it was a Friday and it was actually really, really, the weather was really bad out. He, I was so nervous. He went to work that day. My plan was to tell him when he got home from work and then we had this horrible storm roll in. So then I wound up ordering food and he was going to go pick it up on his way home from work. And it was taking forever for him to get home because the rain and the wind was so bad. And I remember sitting on the couch so extremely nervous. I brought down the pregnancy test that I took, the digital one. And I told the boys, this is what we're gonna give daddy to tell daddy that mommy has a baby in her belly. And for telling the boys, I just said mommy has a baby in her belly. I don't think they fully grasped it until a few weeks in. But I had given the boys the test and Harris walked in the door and like went around to my kitchen to put the Chipotle bag on the counter. And Ben ran in there with the pregnancy test and he grabbed it and he was like, is this real? Like, you know how everyone's first reaction when a pregnancy is like a shock and you're telling somebody, especially your partner, it's like, is this real? Is this yes, really a yes? He was like, what does this mean? I was like, what do you mean? What does it mean? It means... 
I'm pregnant. And so it did take him a little bit to come around to it. Definitely better than last time because last time it was a complete shock to both of us. He was like shell shocked. I think because he knew that this was a possibility every single month, it definitely lessened the blow. But he was excited on top of being shocked. Um, I think a baby is a blessing no matter the scenario. And we're both very excited now, especially because we know the gender. We're both very excited to welcome our third and last baby. I think he's mostly excited about the fact that this is our last baby because we have both agreed on three and this has been such a constant conversation. I feel like when the boys turned two, I was pressing for a baby and then they turned three and I was pressing for a baby. And so I feel like it has been a thing every single month for the last few years of me being like, can we start trying? Can we start trying? So I think he's more so excited that the conversation is over with and we're rounding out our family and we can close this chapter and move on. But he was shocked and he was happy and he was excited altogether. Okay, next question. Um, somebody asked, do you plan to turn Jack and Ben's playroom into a nursery for baby number three? So if you guys are unfamiliar, I will maybe, I have, I think I have like an empty house tour or something. I'll link that video for you guys so you can get a sense of the layout. If you guys are unfamiliar, you guys don't see my vlogs. But there is another bedroom next to the boys' room upstairs. And we originally had that be their playroom. Um, we have like a bookshelf in there a few toys, a rocker, all that kind of stuff. And then last year I actually wound up redoing our den area that we have downstairs. That was just like an empty space collecting dust and we weren't utilizing it. And as the boys got older and they got larger and more toys, they definitely needed more room for that. So we redid the den and that's like the main play area now. The room upstairs that used to be the playroom is kind of just like a storage room now at this point. We throw some random things in there. I have like bins of clothes in there. We do still have like the boys books and everything up there. But the boys don't really go in there to play. It is a pretty small room just like the boys room. All of the rooms in this house are pretty small. That room we are going to be changing into a baby's nursery. And it already has like a lamp. It has... Um, the rocker and the footrest in there. I just have to get like a dresser, a crib, obviously, a carpet, some decorations. I'll probably start ordering that stuff in a few months because I am a little bit antsy and want to make the baby's room. Um, but yes, that room will turn into the nursery. Okay, next Question, somebody asked any favorite names for a boy or a girl. I'm actually going to film an entire baby names we love but won't be using video. I did this last time with the boys and I actually don't think I ever talked about girl names. I think I just did boy names because um, the boys were boys. I think this time around, since this is their last baby and it's like the last time that we're picking a baby name, I am going to do um, girl names and boy names that we love but won't be using. And of course you won't find out baby's name until they are born, even though everybody in my life pretty much knows baby's name. Um, we're like 95% sure on what the baby's name is going to be. Again, I like to keep that for like the suspense and secret from you guys. So baby's name will not be announced until they're born, but I will film um, a baby names we love, but won't be using video. And I'll most likely get that up in a few months. I feel like it's a little bit early to get that up now. I'll probably wait until like the end of the second trimester. I don't want to like bombard you guys with all of the fun baby content now and then be left with nothing towards the end. So I will probably spread that out, but you will get that video from me. All right, we're already almost 20 minutes in. So I'm going to kind of pick up the pace here. I have one, uh, let's say one, two, three, Oh, maybe only a few more questions. I feel like there were a few more. If I can think of any more that I came across that I didn't screenshot, I will say those and answer those. But the next question is, um, what date did you know that you were pregnant? And I found out, what is happening with my, my computer? I found out on um, the 28th of September. I was very early. I think I was like not even four weeks when I found out, which is definitely making this pregnancy drag a little bit. But I found out in September. Um, next question. Did you find your vision was affected much by, pre by your first pregnancy? Um, I do think my vision definitely changed. I definitely need to go get my eyes checked. I'm well overdue for an eye check. Um, I do wear glasses. I'm supposed to wear them all the time. I don't really wear them all the time. I'm supposed to wear them when I'm driving. I don't really always wear them when I'm driving, but I feel like from the end of my first pregnancy to now, it really hasn't changed that much. I'm interested to see if it changes more after I have the baby because I feel like everything kind of goes downhill 
with each pregnancy. Like your eyesight gets worse, your teeth get worse, your hair gets worse. So I'm interested to see if it changes um, more after I give birth. Um, next question, will you deliver in a hospital? I feel like I also saw this somewhere on my YouTube um, or maybe someone commented it on something. Um, I feel like the question was somewhere along the lines of, you had to deliver in a hospital with the boys. Um, my OB anyway recommended that I delivered in a hospital in an operating room with the boys just in case I had to get a C-section. Um, this time around, I have gotten a few questions if I'm opting for a home birth, if I'm opting for an epidural free birth, um, what are changes that I'm making to my birth plan. And I definitely think this time around, I do, I feel like because it was my first baby, I think this is always the case. With your first baby, you are shocked, scared, nervous, all the things when you start going into labor and you don't want to like miss anything. You don't want to not go to the hospital. I feel like a lot of people go to the hospital more than one time thinking that they're in labor. Even for me, like I didn't know if I was in labor or not when I went into labor with the boys. So I feel like there's always this sense of urgency around your first pregnancy just because everything is so new. This time around, because it is a single time pregnancy and because I feel like I'm a little bit more educated on labor and delivery and I kind of know what to expect. I think this time around, I mean, the hospital is so close to where I live. It's not like the case where some people's hospitals are an hour plus away from them. And so they can't really labor at home a lot. I think this time, because my hospital is so close to me, I would like to labor at home longer. Not that my labor was long with the boys by any means, but there were interventions made to make it go quicker, like getting the, I forget what it's called, Cervidil, I think, inserted and all that kind of stuff. So this time around, if I do go into labor on my own and I don't have to be induced, if everything is looking great, even if my water breaks, I would like to labor at home a little bit longer than I did last time and just really enjoy this experience and have the boys kind of be a part of it because obviously when I get to the hospital, they can't really be a part of it. So I would like to labor at home a little bit longer than I did last time. I would like there to be like less of a sense of urgency to get to the hospital. I do love my hospital. I loved my delivery experience with the boys. I love my OB. So I'm not opting for a midwife or anything like that. I'm sticking with my same OB that delivered the boys. He was amazing. Um, so like I said, labor at home more. I don't think I want to opt for a home birth just because I do love the hospital that I deliver at and I do love my OB and I do trust him. Um, I just don't think a home delivery is in the cards for me. However, I do think I wanna opt for an epidural free delivery, all things considered, as long as everything is going well. Um, with my labor progressing and everything like that, I feel like with the boys, by the time I got my epidural, I really didn't think my contractions were that painful or that the epidural was needed at that point. But because they wanted me to deliver in an operating room just in case one of the babies flipped, and if that was the case that I needed a C-section, I needed to be numbed up. They erred more on the side of caution and instructed me to get it earlier than I probably could have or should have. I think I was only between like four and five centimeters when I got it. I can't really remember. But I feel like my contractions weren't that bad. And I had a really bad adverse reaction to the epidural. I felt like I was being struck by lightning and it was the most painful part of my delivery. I think I'm very scared to experience that again and have that reaction to the epidural. That this time around, I am leaning more towards an epidural pain medicine free delivery. We'll see how that goes. I feel like I really just want to experience it and be able to say that like I did that and see what my body is capable of. So yes, I will deliver in a hospital. I would like to labor at home a little bit more than last time. And I would like to try for an epidural free delivery. Those are like the little changes that I'm making to my birth plan. Other than that, I will most likely keep everything the same. And I feel like I did see a question somewhere, somebody asking me if I plan on breastfeeding again. Yes, I do plan on breastfeeding again. I loved breastfeeding. Now it was extremely demanding and emotionally grueling and mentally draining. I was breastfeeding two babies and I think that is what made it so grueling in the middle of the night. It would take three hours to feed the boys instead of just feeding one baby where I feel like it would be a lot more cut down in time. I always felt like I wasn't producing a lot. I was unsure of my body and its capability to produce 
enough breast milk. The boys were premature, so I wanted them to gain weight and get bigger and healthier. They were so tiny and scrawny when I brought them home. I feel like it was just a lot at once and it was my first time breastfeeding. I feel, again, just like I do feel like I've learned a lot about birth and delivery since having my birth and delivery with the boys. This time around, even after my breastfeeding journey with the boys was over, I feel like I have continued to educate myself and learn new things. And so I definitely am so excited to breastfeed again. I'm hoping that I'm able to breastfeed way longer than I did with the boys. I think I made it six or seven weeks exclusively and until around 13 weeks, I still was doing about one feeding a day. This time around, I would love to have more of an extended breastfeeding journey. I don't think as far as a year, but I definitely would like to make it to the six month mark. And so I am excited and planning on breastfeeding baby number three. So I think that is it. I will definitely do another pregnancy Q&A in the future. So if you have other questions or things come up, leave them on my Instagram, leave them on my videos. It's definitely easy for me to screenshot as they come and then I'll have another plethora of pregnancy questions to answer. I'll probably do another one. I'll probably do like one a trimester. I feel like I'll do one towards the end of my second trimester and then I'll do one towards the end of my pregnancy journey. Um, but we'll see how everything plays out. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys found it entertaining. I'll see you guys tomorrow for Vlogmas day three. I think tomorrow's video is gonna be a what I eat in a day pregnant. Um, let me know if you guys wanna see that um gender reveal coming to you guys next monday so turn on your bell notifications so that you guys can be notified every day that my vlog summer videos go up especially that one i'm trying to get them up by 12 p.m eastern standard time the day of posting so i hope you guys enjoyed today's video with that being said i'll see you guys tomorrow for vlog summer day three